bright duty every student matters hello students now let's talk about our next topic here that is difference between the methods of the moderates and the assertive or radical nationalist definitely the topic's name is big here but the point that we are going to learn here is quite important now students before this we have talked about the indian national congress now if i ask you a question that when was indian national congress formed can you answer that question yes it's quite easy 1885 and who was the founder here so it was the brainchild here a o h u correct yes now when you when we are talking about the indian national congress we have learned a lot of points there right so various leaders were involved in uh, this congress here and also sessions used to take place time and again at various places right so people from different regions they represented here in this indian national congress so there are few terms that you learned in your last topic about the moderates and the radical nationalists now students we are talking about the indian national movement right how did it emerge how did it happen in phases right and what were the important aspects here in all these phases so when we are talking about the phases of indian national movement it was not consistent throughout right students like in french revolution you have learned about the different phases as in how the revolution it started and how it unfolded right in various phases in russian revolution as well you have learned different aspects of the revolution so likewise when we are talking about the indian national movement the struggle for freedom we see that there were various phases throughout in this national movement so the first phase can be referred to as the moderate phase here okay we call it as the moderate phase and the timeline here is 1885 to 1905 okay 1905 1906 now here when we are talking about the second phase it is radical nationalist phase the extremist phase that we are talking about that is from 1905 to 1900 19 most probably till 1916 in the book we have uh, mentioned here it has 1919 but till 1916 17 this phase was there okay then we talk about the gandhian era that is from 1919 to 1947 so it is not inappropriate to mention the timeline here it's correct as well but somewhere 1916 1917 when gandhi mahatma gandhi he came to india the phase that came in the national movement was referred to as the gandhian era when gandhi ji he led the masses he became the supreme leader to lead the masses and he led on various movements such as the non cooperation movement civil disobedience movement rolat satyagraha and so on so we are going to learn about that part as well now here students one by one we will focus on all these phases now have you understood this part here why are we trying to distinguish these phases here because in all these phases we see that there were some important leaders right and they had certain political ideas according to which they worked right so here when we are talking about the moderate phase we are referring to the moderate leaders right who had different mindset and it was quite different from that of the radical nationalist leaders or the assertive nationalist leaders okay so let us try to understand this as well now when we are talking about the moderates what were the main aims or the main ideas of these moderate leaders now students i am referring the term moderates do you know some of the moderate leaders do you remember their names actually yes we can talk about gopal krishna gokhale right when we are learning about the indian national congress 
we see that initially many of the leaders they were moderates so the best examples here can be gopal krishna gokhale dada bhai naroji right apart from that subramanyam ayya right then we have badrudin tayab ji so these were some of the important leaders the moderate leaders right now what were their beliefs so the moderates believed in constitutional agitation yes students when we are talking about the moderates they believed in moderate means that is why we are referring to them as the moderates it means that they did not want to resort to extremist means they did not want to resort to violent means or they did not want to pressurize the government through extreme measures right so the moderates they believed in constitutional agitation now what does this mean constitutional agitation so they wanted to fulfill their demands through constitutional means right so they had full belief in the british justice system right and they believed that it is through constitutional means that they could fulfill their demands right they could challenge the government and they could fulfill their demands but through a right way a right process okay they believed in the creation and organization of public opinion through petition meetings resolutions and that the authorities would concede these demands gradually yes in a very peaceful manner they believe that it is only through petitions writing petitions to the british government then making certain demands through that holding meetings resolutions demonstrations right and uh, circulating pamphlets so these are some of the constitutional ways through which they could help uh, they could ask the authorities to fulfill their demands gradually why because they had full belief in the british justice system and they did not want to go outright on them right so some of the nationalist leaders here they it is uh, wc bonoji right not banerji we can call it bonoji as mentioned in the book dada bhai naroji sk banerji gopal krishna gokhale some other names that i have mentioned here they were also the moderate leaders now radical nationalists on the other hand they believe that mass action alone could lead to swaraj or independence now there are certain points that i would like to point out here students some limitations of the moderate leaders so these leaders the moderates they were mainly the educated class the elite class right so they did not involve the masses here okay and they stressed on education a lot so here we see that on the other side the radical nationalist these people they believe that mass action very important point here right so it is only through mass action that they could challenge the government they had no belief in the british justice system right they did not believe that by circulating pamphlets by showing demonstrations by peaceful protest they could win the hearts of the british government in order to fulfill their demands so here they believed in mass action and overthrow the british government and believed in swaraj or independence so this was the only way through which they could get swaraj swaraj as a self rule about which we will learn later on as well now here we are talking about the radical nationalists the assertive nationalists okay so they pressed for political work among masses and for direct political action by the masses so here you can see the stress on the masses they very much believed in the involvement of the masses unlike the moderate leaders that consisted only the moderate group that consisted only of the elite educated class there okay so here people they believe that political action it should be taken direct action should be taken by the masses now prominent leaders here already you are uh, very much aware of the trio leaders here that is lokman tilak as a bal gangadhar tilak vipin chandrapal lala lajpat rai and one more important 
leader here was Aurobindo Ghosh. Okay, students. So he was really famous for taking out some revolutionary movements and also doing some extremist measures through which he wanted to overthrow the British government in India, right? And impose Swaraj here in India, self-rule in India. Okay. But unlike them, the moderate leaders they believed in Swaraj under the British dominion. They wanted to rule under the British dominion. So these were some of the facts initially, right? Just after the Indian National Congress, it was formed. These leaders, the moderate leaders, they believed in the moderate means, right? Constitutional ways and had full belief in the British justice system, right? But later on, we see that many changes are taking place. So here you have to remember these points. Now, one by one, let us try to differentiate between the moderates and the radical nationalists here. So, the moderates, they had full faith in good intentions of the British government. Yes, like I told you, they had full belief in the British justice system. That is why they believed in the constitutional means through which they could fulfill their demands. But, here we see that the radical nationalists, they did not have the belief in or faith in the government. They wanted reforms within the British government. Yes, students. They wanted the reforms that could happen within the government and it could happen through peaceful way. Okay. They wanted Suraj or full independence, but through direct political action of the masses. Okay, they used constitutional means. They wanted to achieve their aims by the force of their own strength. Right, you already have learned these two points. So these are some of the basic differences between the moderates and the radical nationalists. They were led by ad educated intellectuals, like I told you. They made great sacrifices and drew masses into the struggle. Now if someone asks you what are the limitations of the moderates. So this is one of the limitations. That here, masses were not included in large scale. But when we are talking about the radical nationalists, the assertive nationalists, we see that they made great sacrifices and they believed in the direct political action of the masses. Involvement of the people in large number. When I am referring to masses here, it means that we are referring to the large number of common people who could rise against the British government. Right, because they believe that the British government they were quite exploitative in nature. Okay. Now, this was all about the moderates and the radical nationalists here, the two phases that we have talked about. Let us have a look at these questions based on the topic here. So, the first question is why did the leaders of the Indian National Congress want association with Britain in the beginning and not separation? Can you answer this question, students? Yes. In this question, you have to talk about the moderate phase. Definitely, because the moderate leaders, they were in support of the British system, right? The British government, right? They believed in the British justice system. So, here in this question, we have to talk about the moderate phase that continued till 1905, approx that period, okay? So, you can talk about the moderates and their aims and their beliefs. So, you can say that they believed in the constitutional means in order to fulfill their demands. Also, they had full faith in the British justice system. Apart from that, they consisted of educated elite class and did not involve the masses. So, they wanted association with Britain because they had full faith in the British justice system and they believe that it is through petitions, through peaceful demonstrations 
through circulating pamphlets and writing petitions like i told you so through this they could ask they could uh, the authority could to concede into their demands right they could accept the demands of these moderate leaders so it was in the beginning that they did not want to separate from the british government and they wanted to work they wanted to rule under the british government here okay because this was a moderate phase and the leaders they did not want to go on vehemently against the british government okay so this is how you have to answer this question here the next question is why is the first phase of national movement called the moderate phase why it is called the moderate phase at first mention about the three phases that would be really good then talk about the moderate phase like i have mentioned in the previous question it was called moderate because unlike the extremists the radical or the assertive nationalists they believed in the peaceful ways to fulfill their demands all the points that i have mentioned in the last question you have to men mention here as well full belief in the british justice system they also had full belief that through petitions demonstrations the authority could concede into their demands okay so i have written all the key points here because we have already discussed these points in our last question so here you have to mention these points right talking about the moderate phase talking about the moderate leaders and also what were their beliefs or what were their aims right why was it referred to as the moderate phase these are the points that you have to mention in that question now what did the national movement try to achieve in its moderate phase that is 1800 1885 to 1905 now what are you going to answer in this question so basically during this period they wanted to work in coordination with the british government with the british government in order to fulfill their demands right so you have to talk about this point then they believed in the constitutional means why because they had full faith in the british justice system so through constitutional means they were trying to bring about some major reforms in the country right so these are some of the points again this these questions you know they have the same answer the way that you have to write has to change because we are talking about the moderate phase so the beliefs the ideas the aims that remains the same the question might change in different ways you can be asked different questions here but the answer here it has the same idea right in the same uh, central point here is that about the aims and the beliefs of the moderates through which they were trying to exercise some changes here in our country through this indian national movement right so this is how you have to mention some of the points that you have read in the moderate phase okay